Hey guys, welcome. I'm Ann from Pearson Bell at Home in Old Town Spring, which is a cute little shopping village located in Spring, Texas, which is just north of Houston. So if you're down visiting, do stop in. We're open every day but Mondays. So today we are going to redo some boxes I got at auction. I got quite a few um, wine crates and wanted to show you kind of the condition they started in and how to revision these, redo them um, to be used at home or where have you. So when you hop on, tell me where you're watching from and tell me about your weather. Our weather is hot. It's in the 90s again. It's summer started again. I was getting excited we were having fall and then it went right back to summer. But this weekend should be in the 70s. So I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so I see some of you already popping on. So if you're watching um, live, do sprinkle this around. Uh, if you don't catch me live, make sure you put um, hashtag replay so I know that you caught us on the replay. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so just so you know the condition that some of these boxes, actually most of these boxes, this is actually a fairly tame one. All right, so we've got little spider things happening there, little spider web homes. Uh, we've got more spider webs and lots of dirt. And then we've got the chalk um, from the auction, of course, and just pretty dirty in general. And because these are wood, raw wood, um, I'm not using the uh, white lightning or any type of liquid cleaner like that. So I'm basically just sanding these down and damp, a very slightly damp cloth, just wiping any of the sanding residue off. Um, some of these have stickers that have been on them for probably years and getting those off, I uh, used a little bit of some Goo Gone, which was probably not the best idea, but you know, trying to get that off. One I used Goo Gone and the other one I, I sanded as well as I could. So I would say do the best you can when you run into uh, something like this. We got like 24 of these boxes, so I've got a lot of cleaning to do um, and a lot of upcycling. So I've already got one prepared. So this one's already been sanded because these sometimes are a bit rough and you want to kind of get these a little smoother. Sometimes the nails are popping out. This one had some extra nails sticking out. So you want to get all of that nice and cleaned out and up. So everything is nice and smooth, sanded, and I've already um, wet or damp dusted that off. All right, so what we're gonna do on this one, I want to stain it with the Voodoo Gel Stain. Now this is a water-based stain, so once you're done staining it, you're ready to go on to, um, and it dries, you're ready to go on to your next project. So it dries probably about an hour or 30 minutes. So if you've used stain before and it's oil-based, you know that's quite messy, this is, not the case. This is very easy peasy to do. So I'm just gonna squirt that. I had a little bit left over in this bottle here. So I wanna get every bit of it out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest out of this new bottle. And we've already pre-shaken and all that good stuff. You wanna shake these really well to make sure you get them all mixed all right and so you can say voodoo gel stain we're doing tobacco road i want a nice brown color because i want them to look a little more um maybe a little older they've been around for a while so i'm going to go ahead and stain this one i like to use these are little dollar tree or dollar store sponges i just cut them in half so i have a little handle to hold on to so it has like that green scrubby on this part you will use that green scrubby side as your handle. Don't use it on, it doesn't work so well when you're trying to, to stain. So I'm gonna dampen my sponge and I'm gonna dip it in my stain. We're gonna go ahead and stain this side that has the writing on it. It's just gonna make it much more faint. So I'm gonna get in here and I just like to, nice and even, consistency get it on there see we've got it nice and even there and if you like it darker you can put it on a little thicker or you can do an, a second coat we'll get it nice and rich 
I just want it tinted, I guess. It's more of what I want. So slightly, there we go. So there is our first coat there, and we're just gonna go all the way around. Uh, we've got our little stamp here. Okay, I think that is where it came from, or the, um, I think these are how they travel. So this one had a little French stamp on it. But you could probably get wine boxes from your local wine bar, possibly. And they're generally going to charge you for them. If you get them free, lucky you. Like I said, we got ours in auction. And all kinds of sizes, so they're really cool. What I want to do is add some little rope for handles. So that will have to come later. I have to find some uh, thicker rope that I can tie up. And that'll work. But I've seen all kinds of things. Now keep in mind when you're doing these and you're trying to make them into a tray, sort of, um, your regular hardware for your cabinetry is going to be too too um, thick so you'll need to get thinner screws or you know shorter screws to make that happen but you can certainly do that so that's an option here as well I have quite a bit of hardware so we may go that direction on a couple of these like I said I've got a lot so we're just making nice even strokes okay and I'm not worried about the bottom so I'm just gonna get all of that and we're gonna go ahead and get the inside and it's a little harder to get the inside with the sponge just based on how it's you know corners and all that good stuff so you get as much of this off as I can on the inside and I'm going to get totally dirty here, but it's okay. It's water-based, so it'll clean up really well. It's okay to get messy because it will come off. All right, so this time I'm going to use for the inside, I'm going to use a chip brush, just one that I can throw away. I'm adding a little bit of water to my stain because I don't want it to go on super-duper thick. And it will because obviously I'm painting it on now. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and give that a good coat. And you could certainly paint these, but I kind of like the charm of all the stuff that's printed on them, engraved on them. Just kind of makes it fun. Add to the story of your piece. But that would certainly be A-OK -okay too. There's always, there's never a wrong way when it comes to painting, right? So I'm gonna get that all in there. And you go with the grain of your wood. Otherwise, it's kind of like trying to swim, what is it, against the current? It's just not happening. Okay. And I'm gonna wipe some of this back. I don't want it to be super duper thick. Okay, let me get that bottom. And this is a cute, this is a fun project. You can get the kids involved because it's water based. So easy peasy. They're not breathing any bad chemicals, so that's even better. Okay, we're just getting all that stain inside and I just kind of on those corners I just jam my brush in there I'm not really really worried about it okay I'm gonna add a little bit more water into my stuff here and these are all imperfect so there's gonna be like some missing pieces of wood Again, it all adds to the charm of these pieces. And you can do any color stain. I just choose 
tobacco road i kind of like it with the theme i'm going with also and it kind of just gives me a vintagey vibe so i'm gonna wipe back some of that excess stain okay and the rag helps me get into some of those corners that i can't get into with the sponge Turn it around so I can get a hold of it better. And it's not deli it's not a delicate job. It's not um, I'm not worried about um, you know or paint if you overwork it or anything like that. You can overwork stain, but I'm not really worried about that here in this case. It's not going to be a problem. So just wiping any of that excess back because we're getting. It's going to get tacky on me here soon, so I want to make sure I don't let it get too dark. I don't want it to be super duper dark. So this particular wood is going to absorb it pretty well. All right, one more little part there we're going to get. And then we'll be done with this piece for now. Okay. Don't forget when you hop on, let me know where you're watching from. And tell me about your wonderful fall temperatures because it's 90 degrees here in Texas. But don't worry, it'll become fall soon. All right, let's see, just a little bit more there. And if you miss a spot, you can always come back and just dab your stain in the little spot or what have you, because I've got like little divots and stuff like that and that's just gonna be totally normal like they were um, staples probably for this one for the lid some have lids some do not some have dividers some are missing the dividers you can always fashion some up with another piece of wood but that's not the purpose of my project you can certainly get all crafty like that. All right. Okay. Oh, I see a little spot missing up here. Kind of right, some missing wood. Got beat up. All right. So there's our piece. You can still see the writing on it. You can still see some of the stamps from shipping on it, which I like. This one was in really good condition. There was no, um, there were no stickers stuck to it, so I didn't have to worry about getting any adhesive off or any stickers off, and so it came out really nicely. And again, the stain is soap and water cleanup. I'm using baby wipes to get it off right now. Since I don't have a sink handy so but you can take this application and apply it to furniture as well or signs you want to do a port cleaner you can use the same idea just grab yourself a, a piece of wood and just get after it staining it so these I just throw away they're a one-time use only I don't get into rewashing those it's a lot of they're pretty dirty pretty full of um, stain. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side and let it dry. Okay, I'm going to put it back here behind me. Maybe not there. I'll put it back there. Alright. Alright, so now I have one already done or started. So this one's dry. Got the inside and the outside. Now there were some little sticker areas so I had some sticker here that I had to I'm covering up with our transfer I've got one more right here so I'm gonna show that to you up close so there was a uh, transport sticker there and it just left a, a blank spot or kind of aged some of that wood color so I want to I don't want to cover up all the writing on this I want to kind of have that show but I just want to cover this portion up real quick so I really like this one, especially on this side has really cool gold writing and then you've got the house there. So it's a pretty cool 
um, little piece. So um, I have, this is from my thankful, uh, no, it's from my Sunflower Farms transfer. There's a lot to use in this guy. All right, so these are redesigned by Prima. And you guys know I love my transfers. So I've just cut a little flower here and we're gonna take it off its backing. So now it's super sticky, so you do not wanna to touch with your finger the um, picture. You wanna put it on your piece and set it and then you're gonna to start to apply it with your, either your stick that comes with your piece or you can apply it with your transfer tool, whatever you have. I like my transfer tool. Okay. Because it works the best for me. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna rub this on. And that was another purpose for sanding the wood a bit it is pretty rough and I want to make sure that it adheres um, that my transfer adheres really well to it with no problems okay let's see You'll know I stop breathing when I um, start pulling those off. All right, so we got that nice and clean off. The new transfers do have the grid lines on them. So if you are trying to line up words, that's always perfect for that. Um, when I'm putting something a little more organic on, I don't, it doesn't really pertain to me. So I don't go by the guidelines. Okay. And this is one of my finishing pads. I've cut up into probably six pieces. So I just work from the inside out. You can take a cloth um, and wrap your finger in it. I prefer to not put my finger on it because I will pull up, I have pulled up my transfer before by doing that. So I tend to like to work with my finishing pads more so than just my finger. But everybody has their own preference. All right, ta-da, now you don't see it anymore. So I may leave this alone. We're probably gonna be done on this side. I may add some cool stuff on, I'll probably add something on this side, on the two sides, and maybe a little bit here. Haven't decided yet, but wanted to share that with you because it was two little sticker things on it and I didn't like it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this one. Now this one I've cleaned and sanded. It's a bigger piece, but it's pretty basic on all of it. But I did seal it already with the flat top coat, actually the dead flat top coat by Paint Couture. I just wanted to give it a good seal um, so that it wouldn't be just raw wood. And that's just my preference on this. I didn't want it to be raw wood and then putting the transfer on that. I feel like I need to have a little barrier between it and the transfer. And I picked out the flat, dead flat because it is a, it is totally dead flat. All right, so what we're gonna do, we have some little something down here and then we have on this side as well. So we're gonna start with that side and just picking out just something out of here. We're going to go with, I like all of these, so it's really hard to choose sometimes. Actually there's, let me see. There's one I have already pre-cut. So I've already used these quite a bit. I've done a couple of Lazy Susans with these and some other projects so let's see what we've got okay mm, i want that for the front 
So I did not stain this piece. All right, so let's see. And a lot of times just kind of picking out, laying them on. That one's pretty big, so that goes on the front. Oh. All righty, I found one I like. All right. I feel like this one you can get a little wild and have a lot going on on it and it wouldn't be a bad thing. All right, so I'm picking this one right here. So either way you hold it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever makes you happy. Um, it came out of the Thankful Autumn, but this is also one that's in the Sunflower Farms. So you can find this exact same flower in Sunflower Farms as well. So you can use either one to find it. And we're just going to put, we're going to cover up that guy right there. And all it was is where a stamp was or a sticker was, and we've removed the sticker. So again, we're going to just peel off our backing. Make sure you don't touch your, your transfer, otherwise it will stick to you. Okay. And I'm okay if we don't fully, I'm trying to decide if I want to go, ace, you know, kind of off centered. I think I'm going to go centered. And it's okay if I don't fully cover up that little spot. I think it'll be fine. Okay. All right. So I kind of just, okay. This one's a tall one, so it's hard to, hard to do this one. So I'll kind of pull it over here. So I've already kind of smooshed it on. So it's on there. I cannot reposition it. It's on there. It's, it's not coming off or it'll come off in parts. So make sure you're sure where you want it before you adhere it to your piece. I liked, um, these are all kind of autumn Thanksgiving type um, transfers. And I really like the raw wood feel to everything. So that's why I did not paint these. Plus I like the, the crates have Kind of the fun writing on them and they're kind of neat so so they are um there's not holes in them so they're just perfectly imperfect all right so we're burnishing this on there and all that means is this we're taking our transfer tool or you can take the free little stick that comes with it i used to be a stick girl i used to say i don't need a stinking tool well, I used a tool in one of my classes and I had to eat my words. And if you guys have watched me do a few of these, you know I've eaten my words. This tool does work. Now I will tell you, um, if you think you're gonna use, if you do vinyl, if you think you're gonna use the little um, scraper for vinyl, it does not work. I've tried it, it's too soft. It's, it's flimsy, this is hard plastic. So the ones when you're working with vinyl, they don't work i tried it and i thought that's why i thought this would never work so if you've tried your vinyl tool it does not generally work if you've been lucky and had it come off then you're the lucky person that it works for okay i'm gonna try to pull this up while i'm holding on to this guy like he's a big one And if it starts to pull up, just put it back down and reapply. I really love it when they come off. It makes my day. Ah, yay. All right, so that's on there. Um, pretty well now you can see I'm gonna get kind of close for you guys so you can see that there's a lot of halos and all that good stuff when you burnish that down that's all gonna go away so again my finishing pad I'm working from the inside out you don't want to work from the outside because what's gonna happen is gonna pull up those little edges that aren't quite 100% down and you'll be kind of sad but you know what, if you do make a mistake, and let's say you rip a transfer, comes off, embrace it. 
It's not the end of the world. Don't go, oh my God, I got to take the whole thing off. You do not need to take the whole thing off. It does not need to be perfect. Just embrace it, add another transfer around it, on it, whatever, layer it. Um, embrace that, maybe use some crackle. Just make it look like it was meant to be. Okay, we're just gonna push all that down. And we really wanna get the air bubbles out because when we put a sealant over it, a clear coat, what'll happen, and there's a little rough spot there, so I gotta make sure I get all of that nice and down. So what'll happen when you put your clear coat on and it starts to dry, it'll pull that transfer and bust it open. And that's where I've seen people have issues um, with product like Gator Hide and stuff like that. And I think it might be because it is a, a faster drying top coat and that might be where the problem lies that they have a few air bubbles, they didn't burnish it enough, uh, and then that's what happens. So I've had something similar to that happen when I first did these with the satin top coat. It didn't bust though, it just kept the um, the satin top coat kind of underneath and I just pressed it all down and it was fine. But I can see where some of those faster drying products can be a bit of a problem. And I'm just working this down here. There's some, like a knot hole was there from the wood and it's just a rough patch. So I wanna make sure and get that all worked down. Okay. All right, I think that's all, I, all done there. So I love this and you can wax over it. So if you don't wanna do a clear coat, you can certainly wax. So if I wanted to get kind of crazy, I could certainly do like a brown wax or clear wax, whatever floats your boat on this piece right here. So that's where we've hidden that one sticker spot there. And we're not going to worry about this one yet. We'll figure something out on that side. But I want to show you one more because I love doing transfers. And I hope you love them as much as I do because I really, really can't get enough. All right. So what I'm going to do next. Let's see. I've got two options. I've got the pumpkin spice or ah, give thanks. Uh, give thanks is going to be... A little big but that's okay it's a-okay to have some of your piece what we're gonna do is just cut it off right there so what we'll do is go ahead and get this started so we'll take cut this out actually if we move this around we may not have to lose so much of our um, pretty flower here so I don't really oh, I might keep that too so let's go ahead and cut some of this out And this flower we may use for our other side where we've got the little sticker issue happening. Of course, you could always paint it, not a big deal. But I didn't wanna paint them. All right, so let's see. Um, if I do, deciding if I want to have it look like there's a random leaf over here. I think I have a few more leaves, so I may make, make a couple of leaves and an acorn. I don't know yet. So maybe if I poke that first. I think what I might do is just, this is the dilemma we go through. So in case you're wondering, yes, we all go through these dilemmas of deciding how do we want to put this on our piece where we don't always wake up going, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So <clears throat> don't think we totally know every time. It is a lot of trial and error. I think I'm going to cut out the give thanks and this little leaf over here. So we're gonna apply, we're gonna apply this flower first and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the give thanks and maybe that leaf on there. Not 100% yet on that. All right. But I still know that I wonder if 
how readable that's going to be. You know, those are the kind of things you got to think about too. Is it going to be hard to read if I have all this give thanks over this flower? Do I need to give it some breathing room? And I think I'll do that. So it'll be a little bit. I'm going to pull that down just a tad. All right, just so you guys can see where we're at on that. So I'm going to put that guy right there and give thanks is going to go over just a little bit, just a little bit over that. And we'll go ahead and wrap this around there. So we'll wrap that around the bottom. All right. Okay. Now, if it's detrimental, you have to have this like perfectly lined up. You can always tape it and pull off um, what you wanted. I'm trying to make sure I can see all this. All right, we're just gonna go for it. We're just going for it. All right, so again, <clears throat> we're applying that. Now this one didn't have um, the grid lines in it, it was uh, not a one that's been reprinted yet. Um, as far as I know, it may have um, all of the new transfers uh, that are being printed right now have the uh, grid lines on it and are more opaque. All right, so we're just going to burnish this all down. And if you feel like your transfer is too heavy in one spot, you can always add another somewhere else, add, add a layer of a piece, whatever floats your boat. All right, so I'm gonna bend this. Actually, let me get all that nice and burnished. We have a little bit of um, an edge right there, so I wanna make sure to get that down. It's where that bottom of the crate is put together. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna go on to the bottom. And it's just kind of one of those I don't need to do at the bottom. I could totally cut it off, but this part of the flower would be nothing. I would have really nothing to put it on per se. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bend that really well down. And we're gonna just burnish that edge here. And I do give it a lot of pressure. But not so much that you, you um, gouge your wood. You don't want to do that. All right. So let's go ahead and start pulling that up. Whoop. Get down. All right, so that's on there. Okay. I can breathe again. All right, let's go ahead and get this off. And you always want to make sure that your piece is good and dry. If it's still wet from paint, it's just gonna take you know a lot of elbow grease to get your transfer on and sometimes they don't want to stick to damp paint so just keep that in mind and I always have a little bit of if it's got words or anywhere there's a lot of halos so a lot of leaves can give me a little bit of trouble. It's another leaf there. So once you get past that, you can, it's pretty much smooth, uh, smooth sailing or what have you. 
and it's okay if you pull this and you rip it it's not the end of the world just put it back down it'll line right up as long as you didn't rip it right off it'll line right back up and you just burnish it down and you will never see that line where you've ripped it So you guys can see we've got a lot of halos. I don't know if you can see all that. All right, so now we've got to push all those down. And I'm gonna work from the inside, work my way out. And we've got that little ridge here where the bottom is attached. So you wanna make sure you get that burnished really well. Okay, and I, I know some people use sandpaper. I'm too rough, so I cannot use sandpaper when I'm doing this. Otherwise, I will sand my design off. I have done that before, which made it look really distressed, which is great if that's the look you're looking for. It wasn't what I had planned, but as with all things, you just kind of roll with it. Just like if you're doing blending, just roll with it. I had a customer in today, she was talking about blending. A lot of times when you're blending, you've got to walk away and come back later. Because you can overwork that and make a giant muddy mess. So anytime something's not working right for you, walk away, go eat something, go take a nap, come back the next day, whatever. And you can see it with a different uh, angle or different attitude or different view and a lot of times we're really hard on our own selves so sometimes just taking a picture and sending it to somebody saying and I've learned this if you really want honesty send it to somebody and say hey what do you think about this piece I saw it online today because if they don't know you did it they might be really honest but be ready for the brutal truth because a lot of people aren't going to tell you oh honey that's awful but you know sometimes if you ask for it be really prepared for the honest brutal truth but a lot of times you'll find out that it's not as bad as you think it is and if it's bad as you think it is just start over just repaint all right see there we go we got that i love these i love these love them all right so now we got to figure out what give thanks we're going to put this on here you know i'm going to just chop that little leaf off i'm not digging him yet he will go somewhere else so I kind of want to just pop this right in there I'm just kind of eyeballing it I'm not I'm not real worried like I said if it's not centered I'll add something else on the other side to make it balanced we're not going for symmetry but we do want some balance all right okay I'm just lining this up so I feel like I'm just trying to make sure I got it lined up there's a little line for me all right all right so we're gonna go ahead and burnish this one on and you guys remember Dustin's on today new time um, Tuesday 6 p.m. on his his um, Facebook page I'll be on in about 20 minutes and then we're both on on Thursdays on the Paint Couture page. I'm on at 6 Central, 7 Eastern, and he's on at 7 Central, 8 Eastern. So it's really, I gotta keep up with all these Eastern Central times. So you can catch us back to back, two nights in a row. So much better than watching the, the news and the I guess politics and the corona so we'll give you some relief comical or educational you guys decide <laughs> all 
All right, so we're getting this. Remember, like I told you, words for me usually give me a little bit of trouble. Ooh, ooh. My little E wanted to come run away, so just put it back down and keep going. All righty, let's get down. burnish that all on there and uh oh had a little boo-boo we're gonna put it back down and burnish it and you'll never know okay okay this is getting in my way so just cutting that excess off so I can see since I'm holding this kind of funny I normally wouldn't hold it this way but I'm trying to let you guys kind of see what I'm doing I know it's hard Aha. all right so I've got that on there again you see those words have all that little halo around them all right so we're gonna go from the inside of those letters and we're gonna work our way out and I just kind of go with the letters. I'm going to go kind of with the flow of that letter. Okay. What I want to do is put a transfer on my floor. So we might do that one day. That means I've got to repaint a section of it before we can do that. But I think that would be kind of fun. We would definitely have to put several coats of a top coat to make sure it stayed nice. But that could be a lot of fun. Okay, a little bit of that halo is wanting to come off. I'll usually rub it till it comes off. All right. Okay, make sure. Alrighty, guys. There she is. Give thanks. Now, what we'll probably do, like I said, is because of this one we might could do because of the um, wood is a little bit thicker. I have to double check. So I know this other one is too thin. I can't do just a standard um, drawer pull on it. So um, I'd have to get different screws. So um, that's how that looks, guys. If you enjoyed this, please sprinkle it around. If you're catching us again, um, not on live, make sure you put hashtag replay. Um, always, we sell all of the products here on my webpage, pearsonbell.com. And we do have a coupon code for, for free shipping when you spend $50 or more on any of our paint related products. So it includes transfers, would you bend moldings and our hardware we do have quite a bit of hardware selection so make sure you use code 50 free ship it's in the comments above if you have any questions or comments make sure you drop them in the comments and that's it you guys happy painting